Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hello and welcome to the Scatterable channel and today I want to show you guys my updated setup tour for 2021. I know these seem a little bit repetitive but my setup has actually changed quite a bit in the last year since one year ago today we were uh, on the bridge of COVID-19 and one year later Pretty much working from home has become a standpoint for me, for my YouTube, and what would have been my college degree, but I graduated last semester, so full-time YouTube. Anyways, this is what my setup looked like last year, and this is what it looks like this year. So a lot has changed, and I wanna show you all the things that I did, and for you guys who maybe wanna maybe take any suggestions in this video for your setup, I will include everything that I talk about in this video in the description below. So let's start with what I think was the biggest change, which is the three monitors behind me versus the single ultra wide that I had previously in my old setup. So the main reason why I went with three monitors behind me is because around June of last year, I went ahead and did a sponsored setup video with Gigabytes and I showed off two of their CV27Q 1440p curved 27 inch 165 hertz refresh rate monitors and when i was done using them and i was done with my streaming setup on that other desk that i had i was like what if i just got a third one and i made a triple monitor setup and that really came to fruition whenever i got an email from thrustmaster wanting me to check out their racing wheel and brake pedals and i'm like okay you know what this might actually materialize into something so i went ahead and bought a third monitor they are all suited up on a triple monitor setup on the back of my desk and that is why you see these three CV27Qs from Gigabyte behind me which so far have been pretty strong monitors. I've had no complaints with them. All has been good so far. So for the microphone, I'm using a Rode pod mic hooked up to a Samsung 38 inch boom arm. This again was from the old uh, streaming setup video. Got no complaints. The audio quality on that Rode Pod mic is excellent. It does a good job as well for filtering out any extraneous noise beyond just using that NVIDIA GeForce plugin where it can totally eliminate any background noise. So no complaints there and the boom arm is long enough to get over my monitors and right to my face. Now to take that sound and broadcast it to my PC as well as just control my overall audio setup, I have a Go XLR Mini and that's what's allowed me to control my audio from my main system, microphone, game, music. Pretty self-explanatory. Right next to it, I have an Elgato Stream Deck, and I haven't quite used it recently because I haven't done any streaming, though I do know you can use it in conjunction with Premiere Pro, which I haven't experimented with, but I should, just because it's been sitting on my desk just chilling. So I should obviously use it. For my audio speakers, I'm using two Klipsch R14Ms. Those are two speakers. I don't have a bass right now with my setup just because I'm satisfied with what I have right now. And those are both hooked up to a LoxG, that's how you pronounce it, Class D A10 speaker, which despite being a Class D, oh not speaker, Class D amp. So despite being a Class D amp, I have not had to actually dial up the volume on that anywhere past like one quarter of the way through. So I think it's actually plenty power enough, powerful enough for my two onboard speakers. But I mean, that could change by through on a bass, but I'm fine with what I have right now. It's good enough for gaming and for general everyday use. Then for my camera, I have my old Canon T7i hooked up to an Elgato Camlink 4K straight to my PC. No complaints there, again, other than I wish Canon had a slightly better, well, I mean, this Canon camera that I had was kind of made before the in-home streaming game was really brought to DSLRs. That I have to manually set focus on every time. I can't do it automatically or else the actual like focus bars for your face will come up every time and that will show up on stream. So that is slightly annoying, but I mean, I still have the camera. I'm gonna make the most of it and I got the Camlink 4K for a video project. So obviously I'm gonna reuse it. Now, right next to that camera are two Elgato Key Light Airs, and that's what lights up my face for any conference calls or any streaming if I did do any. 
no complaints with them so far. They take a little bit to set up with Wi-Fi, but they do the trick. And it's pretty nice when you can like adjust the brightness on the go, as well as the color temperature. If you want to match that 5600 Kelvin, that is the same as daylight or something more experimental for a more creative look. And the last Elgato peripheral I have on my desk is an Elgato 4K 60S Plus Capture. This is actually for my test bench, which we'll be covering later in the video, where, I mean, I have another PC that can just benchmark any CPU or GPU that I want, but it'll be routing that signal to the 4K 60S Plus to a 512 gigabyte Samsung Evo SD card, and I can record any footage that I want, take that SD card, plug it into the PC, and get straight to importing in my benchmark footage to my new PC. So it's a nice little setup and it can run everything without being actually hooked up to my main PC. It can just record straight to the SD card, which is really cool. Then for peripherals, I have a Keychron K6 mechanical optical brown switch wireless mechanical keyboard and I do understand that the mechanical keyboard scene has really exploded over the last year and a half. Keyboards, surprisingly, can get really expensive depending on how custom built you want them and what sort of keycaps, lubes, and switches you want. But me, I'm a simple man, a busy man, I should say, more so than like specking out a full custom keyboard. And the Keychron C6 just kind of like nails that overall kind of look that most modern, slimmer mechanical keyboards are looking for, but it's wireless. Everything that I need already comes in the box. And those optical brown switches are good for gaming because they're optical switches, but they're also fairly nice to type on, even though they're not blue. So they're not crazy loud, but still somewhat tactile to the touch. And yes, it is wireless, but boy, there is no latency, zero, while gaming on it. And the same goes for the mouse, which is my modded Logitech G305. I went ahead and got a 3D printed front plate for my little brother, put that on top of it, along with a AA to AAA lithium battery converter. So I have a longer lasting battery in it, that's of course lithium, but it is smaller, so it reduces the weight even further, and I don't know the weight of the mouse off the top of my head, but I want to say it's lighter than 82 grams. I want to say, but don't quote me on that. It's light enough for me, and it's wireless, and again, no latency, no lag. It's not like you're going to lose an FPS tournament with a wireless mouse. That, that mouse is totally fine for me. So those were my gaming peripherals, but let's talk about my sim racing peripherals, which, as I hinted out earlier in the video, are from Thrustmaster. For my steering wheel, I'm using a TSPC racer, and for the pedals, I'm using TLCM pedals, along with a wall mount for the brake pedals. And then the top off with the actual furniture that is used with my setup, I have an IKEA, starts with an E, but I'm not Swedish, laminate tabletop that's 74 inches in length, along with two Ikea Alex drawers, but I'm pretty sure that's pronounced in a certain way that I don't know, because it's Swedish again. And then for the standing leg set that I have on top of it, they are from Unico on Amazon, which is a dual motor set, and for being $270, that's actually a really nice standing leg set. If you want to convert your current desk to a standing desk, I can actually firmly recommend that. It's a fairly quiet standing desk set. It doesn't take long to assemble on top to an, an existing desk that you already have. And the quality is pretty much the same as the other ones that I've had here in the studio, just a little bit cheaper. And it has four onboard profiles. So it's actually a pretty nice standing desk set. So that's what I have so far furniture wise. Before we get into the PC and the rest of my setup, let's talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is a quick and straightforward online website builder for any of you in need for a quick website for school or something more complex and long lasting. Squarespace can do both. I've had quite a bit of experience with it actually from high school all the way up to college where I was just making competitive websites for FBLA for like e-commerce all the way up to college for making websites for my student government for like certain campaigns that were running that year. 
And I don't really see myself switching to another website builder anytime soon since Squarespace, historically, it's just been really easy and simple to use. And if there is a more complex feature that I want in it, all it takes is a quick Google search and some implementation and I'm able to add those complex features. So it's a very versatile website builder. So if you wanna check out Squarespace, I have a link at the top of the description where you can get 10% off your first website or domain. Now back to the setup, which let's go ahead and talk about the PC, which by the way, I just wanna mention, I made a whole video talking about the PC not too long ago. I would recommend that if you want a more in-depth video on the what's and why's of my new PC, but I'll just go ahead and briefly sum up the specs for you guys for this PC. So it's rocking a Ryzen 9 3950X, 64 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz cast latency 16 Corsair Vengeance RAM, an RTX 3080 Founders Edition card, a total of 16 terabytes of RAID 1 storage using Samsung Xenos hard drives, a four terabyte Samsung 860 Pro SSD, which is the main video editing drive SSD, a four terabyte Corsair MP400 M.2 PCI Gen 3.0 SSD, which is gonna serve as the main game drive as well as cache drive for any spare video editing or programs along with a two terabyte ADATA S70 PCI Gen 4.0 SSD that is the main boot drive that is stupid fast, which is why it's the boot drive. And then for the rest of the system, there's an 850 watt Cooler Master SFX 80 plus gold power supply, which is enough to power up that 3950X, 3080, and even overclock if I wanted to. And speaking of overclocking, this case can have a 360 millimeter radiator in it, which I do have along with three 120 millimeter Thermaltake Tough Fan 12s, which are essentially Noctua AF 12X, whatever those funky fans are, but in black. So same performance, but they actually look cool. And to top that all off, it has an ROG Strix iX570 ITX motherboard, in the Sliger SV590 version two. Yeah, that's my PC. It's been doing great for video editing and gaming performance. And if you wanna check out those benchmarks as well as all the reasonings why behind, why I went with each part in that PC, that is linked in the description below as well as a card here in the video. So let's talk about the rest <laughs> of this setup. So starting off actually with this really cool pegboard that I have here. It is called an Ikea Swedish name, I don't know how to pronounce, which is a pegboard and I can hook up anything that I want to it, like any sort of hangers or like drawers. And with that, I've actually used it to where I can put all my gaming peripherals on it, like my headsets and my Oculus Quest 2. And it's a really nice display of my gaming peripherals that also kind of doubles as a background set for other videos that you guys have seen in the past. So it's really cool. I'll have a link to it again at the description below if you wanna check it out. But it's a really cool way to like just manage your gaming peripherals if they're all wireless and have them be like a cool display and you don't need to like wall mount it. Well, you don't need a stud finder. You can just put it right into a drywall and it can hold up to like 50 pounds. So it should be good. But what's on it is just as interesting. I have a Corsair Virtuoso SE RGB wireless gaming headset. That's just if I want to listen to tunes wirelessly. And then I have a Logitech G Pro X wire gaming headset that came with my Quest 2, which doubles as a headset for that VR headset along with hooking it up to my Go XLR Mini if I want to hear the audio straight from it. Also, I have the Quest 2 obviously with my two controllers. One of the 3D printed controller mounts isn't done yet, but that will be done soon. So that will be fully realized in a bit. And then I have two external hard drives and SSDs. One of them is a four terabyte external Western digital hard drive, which is just spare storage. If I need anything that's really big for like video files or game captures. And then I have a two terabyte Samsung T7 external SSD, which doubles as a game SSD. So like whenever I build my gaming PCs for my videos, rather than having to reinstall all the games every time that I benchmark on that PC, I can just grab that external SSD, plug it in, 
tell Steam or whatever game launcher to locate its game storage files to that. They'll automatically load up and update and I can get right to benchmarking without having to reinstall every game that I benchmark every time. And of course my two Xbox controllers. And that's pretty much it for that pegboard. But below it, I have a cabinet that I bought from Walmart. It doubles as a workbench and a cabinet. And I actually have my new test bench in there as well, which I can just put on top of it, hook it up to the leftmost monitor here in my setup, along with the Elgato 4K 60S Plus, benchmark and record anything that I want from it, put it back underneath the cabinet, and it's just beautiful. And again, it doubles as another like B-roll set. So that's really cool. And then finally, we have another shelf, which is the Damon 70 inch by 28 inch geometric bookcase that I got from Wayfair. That's just another cool looking geometric shelf used as a backdrop. I haven't completely decked it out yet with like things to fill the inside of it, but I'm sure they'll come as more time passes. Whew, this is a long take, oh my goodness. And that is it for my PC gaming setup tour for 2021. Hopefully you got the whole way through. I definitely unloaded a lot during that PC segment where I just listed out all the specs in my head like a robot. But if you guys are subscribed to me, you of course like those ramblings, so I appreciate that. Anyways, again, everything that I talked about in this video as well as that Squarespace offer will be linked in the description below. And with all that said, this is the Scatterville Channel, signing out.